So we're going to end this week with a few tips on grammar. Now this course is certainly not a, a course that focuses on grammar, but there are a, little, uh, a few little grammar things that I want to point out that are especially relevant for scientific manuscripts. So the first one has to do with the word data. So uh, you may not realize, but the word data is actually plural. So you don't say the data is or the data shows. You actually say the data are or the data show. And most people get this wrong in speaking and, and, and in writing. And so it's just something you have to kind of teach yourself. Uh, I now actually have trouble. I've edited this so much. I have trouble saying these data shows or these da the data is uh, because now in my head this is a plural word. But uh, when I started writing in the sciences, I certainly thought, like everybody else, that data was a singular uh, word, and it often gets used in the singular, but technically it's plural. So you would say these data show an unusual trend, the data support the conclusion, the data are critical. You would only use the singular form if you were talking about one data point, a datum, which we hardly ever do. Be careful about the use of affect versus effect. Uh, sometimes your word processing um, a program like Microsoft Word will catch if you make an error with affect versus effect, um, but it doesn't always get caught. Um, so affect is the verb form and effect is the noun form. So affect is the verb to influence, so you would say like the class affected her. In general, affect is the verb and effect is the noun. There is a couple of exceptions which I'll just point out for fun, that affect does have a noun form, but it's hardly ever used unless you're in psychology. Um, and that affect is, uh, you know, denotes a feeling or an emotion, uh, an expression. So, um, so that's a particular use of affect that, as a noun that, ha that usually is only used in psychology. So in general, affect is usually the verb, and effect is usually the noun. So the class had an effect on her. Of course, it would be more concise to say the class affected her rather than the class had an effect on her. Now just to point out for fun, there is a verb form of effect, uh, but again, it's only used in very specific case. You could say uh, to effect a change, um, but again, almost always when you use effect, you're, you actually want the noun form. It's actually a noun uh, with this one little exception. So watch out for affect versus effect. Um, you know, you see errors on this sometimes. This is a headline from a newspaper. Some editor got it wrong. Uh, it said terrorist plots effect the beauty industry. So of course that's not correct. It should have been terrorist plus affect the beauty industry. Now certainly if you get, if you make a grammatical or a copy editing mistake in your scientific manuscript, uh, you're not going to get rejected just because of that, but obviously it shows some professionalism if you try to get these things right. Here's another one that a lot of people don't know. There's actually a difference between compared to and compared with that you might not be aware of. So again, just trying to get all these little things right. So compared to is actually used when you want to point out similarities between different things. And so this is the less common use. The, most people in their writing will use compare to, but actually the, it's really only supposed to be used for this very specific case. Usually it's when you're making metaphors. So the classic example is, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So you're comparing a person to a summer's day. Those are things that are very different and you're trying to find something similar between them. So again, usually only used for like metaphors. In the sciences, we almost always actually want to use compared with. So uh, compare with means that you're pointing out differences between similar things, which is usually what we're doing in the sciences, right? We have two groups of mice, we want to com point out what's different between the two groups. So you're probably almost always going to use compared with. So the examples are, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? But if you were doing something comparing tumors, for example, you're pro probably going to use compared with. So brain tumors are relatively rare compared with more common cancers, such as those of the lung, breast, and prostate. So tumors and tumors are similar things, and we're trying to find differences in their frequency. So that's a compared with case. The use of that in which often uh, gets confused. So pay attention to this one. I edit this one a lot. So that is used when you have a restrictive clause, and which is used when you have a non-restrictive clause. So uh, you can actually recognize when which is appropriate because you're going to be setting things off with commas. So what's the difference between these two? Well, if you say the vial that contained her RNA was lost, you're saying, well, the vial that contained her RNA was lost, the vial that contained her DNA was not, right? You're, you're saying that there is many vials and you're telling me specifically which one. So that information is essential because if I don't have that information, I won't be able to distinguish between the different vials. Compare that with the following sentence. 
the vial, which contained her RNA, was lost. In that sentence, there's only one vial in question. We know, everybody knows what vial we're talking about, and what follows the which is just some extra information that the vial, which happened to contain her DNA, that, or her RNA, that's non-essential information, set off by commas, was lost. So there's only one vial in question in that sentence. I'll give you some more examples of that versus which. So for example, this was a sentence I had to edit. It said, other disorders which have been found to co-occur with diabetes include heart disease and foot problems. Well, the have been found to occur with diabetes is actually essential material. So there shouldn't be a which there, it should be a that. Because other disorders, you couldn't set that off with parentheses, it's essential information. Other disorders that have been found to co-occur, that you need that clause in there, so therefore it's a that case. If it was not essential information set off with commas, then you could use a which. So your, the key question is, is your clause essential or non-essential? And you usually can tell that is, it, do I want to set it off with commas or not? If you want to set it off with commas, it's usually non-essential. So the essential clause, when you use that, it cannot be eliminated without changing the meaning of the sentence. So if you were to take out what follows that, uh, you would actually change the meaning of the sentence. The non-essential clause, you could eliminate that stuff that's in parentheses, or not in parentheses and within commas, without altering the basic meaning of the sentence. So that's a which case. A few more examples. So like if you said the bike that is broken is in the garage, that tells you that the bike that's broken is in the garage, the one that's working fine is on the driveway. Right? It identifies one bike out of many. So that's essential information, or you, we wouldn't know what bike you were talking about. Compare that with the bike, which is broken, is in the garage. So this is just adding an extra piece of information about the one bike in question. So everybody knows we're only talking about this one bike, and here's some extra information about it. So again, because it's not essential, it's set off with commas. That's really the way that you can get this right, is if you're setting something off with commas, use which, and if you're not setting it off with commas, use that. And Strunk and White, again, in that cute little book, Elements of Style, that's really worth a read if you have time. They say, careful writers, watchful for small conveniences, go witch hunting, remove the defining witches, and by doing uh, so, improve their work. And just to show you that even some of the best writers get these little grammar things wrong, um, the late uh, physicist Richard Feynman is, was a wonderful writer, also a, a wonderful researcher. I'll be using examples from his writing in this course, of, of examples of good writing. Uh, but here's a, something he had written. When we say we are a pile of atoms, we do not mean we are merely a pile of atoms, because a pile of atoms, which is not repeated from one to the other, might well have the possibilities which you see before the mirror. And notice there's two witches in there. Notice they're not set off with commas. Those are actually essential pieces. So actually both of those should have been that's. So even the best of us get these things wrong uh, occasionally. But pay attention. Try to get them right when you can. Uh, one more little example. Uh, stroke incidence data are obtained from sources which use the ICD classification systems. Now notice in the original, this was something I was editing, the authors actually did set it off with a comma, so they thought they needed a which. But actually you can see when you read that the pause there is funny. There really shouldn't be a pause. This is not extra information. If you just stop the sentence at sources, it's a really funny sentence, right? Would you just say stroke incidence data are obtained from sources? No, we need more information. That information is essential. So that actually should have a that and should not have a comma there. That clause is essential, so use that. So you should say stroke incidence data are obtained from sources that use the ICD classification systems. So watch out for that in your writing. One last one to pay attention for uh, that people often get wrong is you don't want to use they or their when the subject of your sentence is singular. Make sure you have agreement there. Um, this one's tricky, and the reason people put in they or there is that to keep it in the singular, you often have to make a gender choice. And, and that's problematic. So, you know, do I say his or do I say her? So here's an example. If you were to say each student worries about their grade, that would be incorrect because each student is singular, their is plural. So to correct that, though, you'd have to say either each student worries about her grade or each student worries about his grade. And, you know, then you have to make this gender choice. You're worried about, you know offending somebody, so um, it's a little awkward to go back and forth from his and her, it's a little awkward to write his slash her. So my recommendation in general when you find yourself in this situation where 
you, you know, you're tempted to use the plural so that you can avoid gender, is just to turn the subject, turn the whole sentence into the plural. So, for example, rewrite this as all students worry about their grades. And that way you don't have to make that singular choice. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.